You're watching Tag TV. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 2nd of August. India Inc. six packs with Maldives to broad-based ties announce $100 million line of credit. Security tightened in Kabul after US strike kills Al-Qaeda Zawahiri. Biden says justice delivered. And Pakistan Election Agency rules former Prime Minister Khan's party received illegal funds. And now for all the details. India will extend an additional 100 million US dollar line of credit to the Maldives Prime Minister Narendra Modi said on Tuesday after a meeting with the island nation's President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli in New Delhi. Both the leaders also witnessed the exchange of six agreements to boost cooperation in capacity building, cyber security, housing, disaster management and infrastructure. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday announced that India will extend an additional 100 million US dollar line of credit to the Maldives after a meeting with the island nation's president Ibrahim Mohamed Soli in New Delhi. During delegation-level talks, both the sides reviewed progress in bilateral ties and discussed ways to strengthen linkages in areas of development partnership, trade and connectivity, among others, India's foreign ministry said on Twitter. In a joint press meet, Modi said that they reviewed projects for the construction of 4,000 social housing units in Greater Mali, and India will additionally provide financial support for 2,000 social housing units. Both the leaders also witnessed the pouring of first concrete of Greater Mali Connectivity Project and exchange of six agreements to enhance cooperation in capacity building, cyber security, housing, disaster management and infrastructure. Modi said the defence and security cooperation is vital amid the threats of transnational crime, terrorism and drug trafficking in the Indian Ocean region. Bharat Maldiv partnership न सिर्फ दोनों देशों के नागरिकों के हित में काम कर रही है बल्कि क्षेत्र के लिए भी शांति स्थिरता और समृद्धि का स्रोत बन रही है मालदीव की किसी भी जरूरत या संकट में भारत फर्स्ट रिस्पॉन्डर रहा है और आगे भी रहेगा the Moldavian president in his remarks appreciated India's support during COVID-19 pandemic and said their relationship goes beyond diplomacy. Later in the day, Soli also called on his Indian counterpart Draupadi Murmu in New Delhi. He is the first head of the state to meet the newly elected president of India. Security was tightened in Afghan capital Kabul on Tuesday near the site where Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri was killed in a U.S. strike over the weekend. The biggest blow to the militant group since its founder Osama bin Laden was killed in 2011. U.S. President Joe Biden said justice has been delivered, while the Taliban condemned the strike calling it a violation of international principles. Taliban authorities on Tuesday tightened security near the site where Al-Qaeda leader Iman al-Zawahiri was killed in a U.S. strike over the weekend in the capital Kabul. The biggest blow to the militant group since its founder Osama bin Laden was killed in 2011. U.S. President Joe Biden confirmed in a television address on Monday evening that he had authorized the precision strike against 71-year-old Zawahiri. Now justice has been delivered and this terrorist leader is no more, Biden said, adding that no civilians were killed in the strike. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken in a statement said the Taliban grossly violated the Doha Agreement by hosting and sheltering Zwahiri. Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid confirmed that a strike took place and strongly condemned it, calling it a violation of international principles. Zwahiri, an Egyptian surgeon who had a 25 million US dollar bounty on his head, had helped coordinate the 9-11 attacks that killed nearly 3,000 people. He succeeded Osama bin Laden as the Al-Qaeda leader, 
after years as its main organizer and strategist. Zawahiri was indicted in the U.S. for his role in August 1998 bombings of the U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania that killed 224 people. He is also believed to have plotted the October 2000 attack on the USS Coal naval vessel in Yemen, which killed 17 U.S. sailors. The drone attack is the first known U.S. strike inside Afghanistan since U.S. troops and diplomats left the country in 2021. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Election Commission ruled on Tuesday that former Prime Minister Imran Khan's political party received millions of dollars in illegal funds from foreign countries. The decision could lead to a ban on Khan and his Pakistan Tehreek Saf party, which rose to prominence on an anti-corruption drive. The Election Commission of Pakistan, ECP, in a unanimous verdict on Tuesday, said that Imran Khan's Pakistan tehreek e insaf PTI, had received illegal funding from foreign countries, including the United States, UAE, Australia and UK. In a case that has dragged on for years, the ECP said PTI received funds from 34 individuals and 351 businesses, including companies. The tribunal said the party had submitted a fake affidavit about its bank accounts and it had determined that the party hid 13 bank accounts that it should have declared. The commission has asked the party to submit an explanation as to why its funds should not be seized. PDI spokesperson Fawad Chaudhry denied wrongdoing and told reporters, we will challenge this ruling. Chaudhry said the funds in question were received from overseas Pakistani, which is not illegal. The foreign funding case, now referred to as the prohibited funding case, was filed by former PDI leader Akbar S. Babar in 2014, alleging serious financial irregularities in parties' funding. Meanwhile, the ruling coalition launched a scathing attack on Imran Khan's following the verdict. Pakistan Muslim League leader and Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif said that the Commission's verdict on PDI's prohibited funding case charged sheets Imran for violating the Constitution. Khan was Prime Minister from 2018 until April of this year when he was forced to step down after losing a confidence vote that he said was the result of a U.S. conspiracy. The United States denied that. Since then, Khan has been rallying with his supporters to press his demand for a new election. The new Prime Minister, Shehbaz Sharif, has rejected that demand. Moving on. Residents of Mirpur in Pakistan-administered Kashmir recently staged a demonstration over fuel adjustment charges in electricity bills and said that unjust tax is being imposed on them. They warned that they will not pay the bills until the extra charges are abolished. Locals in Pakistan-administered Kashmir recently held a protest at Zaman Chowk in Mirpur district against fuel adjustment charges in the electricity bills and said that unjust tax has been imposed on them. They expressed if electricity is generated from the hydropower projects in the illegally occupied region, then why they have to pay such heavy taxes. They said the abolition of tax on electricity bills was announced in the budget speech by the Prime Minister, but the Department of Electricity is going against it. They said they will not pay the bills until the extra charges are abolished. ये है कि जो फ्यूल एडजस्टमेंट चार्जेस डाले जाते हैं ये बिलों के अंदर फ्यूल प्राइस एडजस्टमेंट ये इसका ताल्लुक आजाद कश्मीर के लोगों के साथ नहीं क्योंकि यहाँ पे खालिस्तान पानी से बिजली पैदा हो रही है और उसी के हवाले से बिलें होनी चाहिए ये इजाफी बोझ जो है आजाद कश्मीर के लोगों पर थोपा जा रहा है इस फ्यूल प्राइस जो एडजस्टमेंट है इससे निजात दिलाई जाए लोकल्स इन पाकिस्तान एडमिनिस्टर्ड कश्मीर हैव लॉन्ग ब्लेम्ड इस्लामाबाद एक्सप्लॉइट दैम थ्रू इट्स अनजस्ट इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसीज and deprives them of their basic rights. They accuse Pakistan, which rules the region through a proxy, does not grant the locals any political rights and representation, although it taxes them heavily. A news from Sri Lanka. Former Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa is not being accorded any privileges or immunity in Singapore. Its Foreign Minister Vivian Balakrishnan has said. Rajpaksa landed in Singapore on July 14, a day after fleeing his crisis-ridden country via Maldives and following a popular uprising that forced him to resign as president. Singapore's Foreign Minister Vivian Balakrishnan said on Monday that former Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa was not being accorded any privileges or immunity in his country. 
The Singapore government does not accord privileges, immunity and hospitality to former heads of state or heads of government. Consequently, former President Gotabaya Rajapaksa was not accorded any privileges, immunity or hospitality, Balakrishnan said. Rajapaksa landed in Singapore on July 14, a day after fleeing his crisis-ridden country via Maldives and following a popular uprising that forced him to resign as president. Days later, Vikramasinghe won a vote in parliament to become the new president. The Rajapaksa family, including former Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa, has dominated the politics of the country of 22 million for years and most Sri Lankans blame them for their current misery. The country of 22 million people has been crippled by an economic crisis with shortages of fuel, food and other necessities. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka's Supreme Court extended a travel ban imposed on former President Mahinda Rajapaksa and his brother ex-minister Basil Rajapaksa until August 4 as they were named respondents in a case filed over the economic crisis, according to Ada Derana News website on Monday. A news from Nepal. Nepal sees no need to approach the International Monetary Fund for a fresh loan as pressure on foreign exchange reserves is easing after a pickup in tourism. Its central bank governor has said. Nepal's central bank governor said on Monday that the country sees no need to approach the International Monetary Fund IMF for a fresh loan as pressure on foreign exchange reserves is easing after a pickup in tourism. Mahaprasad Adhikari, governor of the Nepal Rashtra Bank, NRB, told Reuters in an interview, at present our focus is on managing demand to reduce pressure on foreign exchange reserves. He noted that rising workers' remittances and tourist arrivals offered a silver lining for the economy. Tourism earnings increased more than three times to 25.52 billion Nepali rupees, that is 201.8 million US dollars, in the 11 months to end mid-June compared with the same period a year earlier, though they are still well below pre-pandemic levels. Remittances from overseas workers, meanwhile, rose 1.5 percent to 7.5 billion US dollars during the same period, government data showed. His comments came after Finance Minister Janardhan Sharma was reinstated on Sunday after a parliamentary probe found no evidence to prove that he was involved in making illegal changes to the budget. Many economies in South Asia, including Sri Lanka, Pakistan and Bangladesh, have sought IMF assistance to reduce risk of defaults on external payments following a jump in the prices of imported fuel and grain, while export earnings have been much more muted. On the occasion of Nag Panchami, a festival dedicated to serpent god, devotees in India and Nepal thronged temples of Hindu god Lord Shiva and offered prayers and performed rituals on Tuesday. On this day, devotees venerate the snake god as part of a custom that has been passed down the generations. Have a look. Hindu devotees across India offered prayers to serpent god and milk to snakes as they marked Nag Panjami or snake festival on Tuesday. Priests at Sri Mahakaleshwar temple in central Ujjain city bathed Shivalingam, phallus representation of Hindu god of destruction Shiva, with ash, performed Aarti, holy ritual of lights, and placed the statue of Sheshna, or serpent god, in the temple as huge crowd of devotees reached the sacred place to worship. Nag Panchami is celebrated every year on the fifth day of the fortnight leading to the full moon during the monsoon month of Shravan. Bhasma Ishtan ke Pashat Bhagwan ko Shesh Naran Dharan Karaya Gaya. Yehi Shesh ka Darshan Karna Aaj ke Din Sabi Bhakto ke Liye Bada Mahatma Purna hai. In northern Prayagraj in Ayodhya cities, devotees offered milk and prayed at temples to seek blessings. Some devotees also fed milk to snakes on the occasion. On this day, worshippers observe a fast throughout the day, and there is a general belief that feeding milk to snakes rids people of their problems. People also avoid plogging or digging the earth on this auspicious occasion, as it could harm and anger the snakes which reside underneath. In Nepal, Hindu devotees flock to Nagpokri, a pond dedicated to the serpent deity in Kathmandu's Naksa, to offer prayers and perform ritual. Special offerings of dubu grass, flour and rice grains mixed with red vermilion powder along with milk 
sweets and fruits are offered to the serpent deity. Meanwhile, devotees were stunned to see a live monoclet cobra in a basket, brought by a snake charmer on the premises of Nag Pokri, coinciding with the festivity of Nag Panchumi. They made offerings like milk and vermilion powder to the cobra. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. You're watching Tag TV. Number one multicultural channel. This is Tag TV. Tag TV tags you news, views, and entertainment.